thing. We're going to engage you as a committee. We have already engaged one of our your colleagues in the House, and members are advised not to be prejudiced by the fact that you are their colleague in the House, but to ask questions that add value to the process of your confirmation on your suitability to hold the office for which you have been nominated. For the record, I'm the chairman of this committee, the Speaker of the National Assembly. On my right is the Deputy Speaker, Gladys Boss. We have uh, Jeremiah Ndombi, the Deputy Clerk, sitting in for the clerk, and I'll invite the members to introduce themselves. Naisula Lesuda, MP Samburu West. Kimani Shongo. Junet Mohammed. Nelson Koech. <coughs> Kosing David. Yes. Turn to your right. I'm Marcel Mary, Teso South. George Gitonga Murugara Faraka. <laughs> Owen Bayer, Kilifi North. Robert Mbui Kadiani. Stephen Mule Matungulu. Dido Raso Saku. Abdi Shurie. Mishi Mboko Likoni. Adihab Mukami Nyeri. Kaleb Amisi Saboti. Engagement will be with you taking an oath before you answer any questions. Uh, we have uh, the Holy Bible, the Holy Quran, and the Holy, is it called Gita? Yes, the <coughs> Hindu holy book. Which holy book do you swear by? I will use the Bible. The Bible. Take it in your right hand and recite the oath. <coughs> uh, I, James Opio Wandai, do swear that the evidence I shall give before this committee on the matter under its consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you. You may sign on the oath. Thank you. Uh, you may also give the sergeant your original documents to enable the clerk to check with what we have on you. As we start, Honorable Wandai, we expect from you precise and concise responses to the questions put. No unnecessary stories. And um, if we go that way, we'll move reasonably fast. Questions may be put to you that make you uncomfortable or not. Just take them in the stride and answer them because there is no ill will from any member here. It's all in the course of duty. We'll start by inviting you, for the record, to tell the committee your name your educational background, your work experience, and your key competences to make you suitable for the appointment to which you have been nominated. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker and members. Uh, I was born some 52 years ago in Siaya County. Uh, my early schooling started at Sikalami Primary School that's a rural school in Ugunja sub-county, uh, which I joined in 1979 and uh, went ahead to do my KCP, KCP exams in 1986. Thereafter, I proceeded to Sawagongo High School in the present-day uh, Gemiala sub-county for my O-levels. And I was there until the year 1990, 
when I did my KCAC, upon which I proceeded to the University of Nairobi to pursue a Bachelor of Science degree in agriculture, <clears throat> majoring in agricultural economics, which I completed in the year 1996. And later on, I undertook a diploma course in business management at the Kenyan Institute of Management. Thereafter, I also uh, did an MBA at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. I later on again enrolled for a Bachelor of Laws degree at Daystar University, which I completed uh, uh, last year, I think, yeah. Uh, Honorable Speaker, my professional background or job background, I basically worked in the private sector, in the corporate world, all the time before I joined parliament. As a matter of fact, I joined the British American Tobacco Company in the year 1998 and worked for whole 14 years before I resigned in early 2013 to join parliament. During my stint at British American Tobacco, first I started as a fairly junior officer dealing with the extension services within uh, the tobacco growing regions of Korea, Migori, Bungoma, uh, Teso, uh, Deka, uh, finally Nairobi, and eventually uh, Uganda. But I rose steadily through the ranks, Honorable Speaker, from an extension, field extension officer to an area manager. Later on, I became the regional manager for Western Kenya, in, based in Malakisi, a place called Malakisi in Bungoma, between Bungoma and Teso, I think. It's in Bungoma, actually, yes. And specifically in Serisia constituency. I stayed in Malakisi for seven years as the regional manager for BAT, where I was basically undertaking uh, uh, the business uh, work for the company in charge of managing the contract farming business. I later on was promoted to, lead, to handle the operations for the whole country, the leaf for growing operations for the whole country, based in Thika from the year 2007 all the way to 2011. And uh, thereafter, I was seconded on an international assignment on a project internationally, but based between Nairobi and, and London. And finally, I went on an international secondment in Kampala. I was, I was posted in Kampala to manage leaf business sustainability for both Uganda and DRC. I was to be there for two years, but I cut short my, my tour of duty by a year to come back and run for elective uh, uh, positions as the MP for Ogunja, which I successfully did in 2013. But before I come to my role in Parliament, Honorable Speaker, quickly, uh, during the time I was working in BAT, I was, of course, uh, a business manager. Uh, because uh, up to the point I was leaving, I was now essentially a strategic business manager, uh, dealing with strategic business issues and leading teams of diverse backgrounds. In my responsibilities, I was in charge of environment, health, and safety issues as the head of uh, those uh, uh, departments. And therefore, I came uh, into contact with Matters Energy fairly early in life. Fast forward, Honorable Speaker, uh, when I joined the Parliament in 2013, my first term at the 11th Parliament, I served in the committee, among others, the Committee of Environment and Natural Resources. Uh, in my second term, beginning the year 2017, I was privileged 
to be elected the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee, a role I played for the entire term of, the, of, of that parliament, uh, serving with uh, some distinguished members who are in this committee, including the Honorable United Mohammed, uh, who is now the leader of minority. Honorable Speaker, in my role as chairman of PAC, I interacted with accounting officers of all ministries, all state departments, and all constitutional commissions, but to narrow down to the Ministry of Energy, yeah, uh, whose books of accounts I examined for the whole five years. Yeah, so that gave me uh, an idea, really, of matters energy and petroleum. I remember dealing with the two accounting officers, one in charge of energy, one in charge of petroleum for the entire period. And uh, fast forward again to the, my third term, the 13th parliament. Again, when I came in, I was privileged to be elected uh, the leader of minority uh, alongside my colleagues, uh, Deputy uh, Honorable Robert Mbui, the distinguished member for Korkathiani. Honorable Junet Mohammed again was then my chief whip, among others. But I must also hasten to add that in this time of parliament, apart from being the leader of minority, I have also been a member of the Public Investment Committee, Energy and Commercial, that is ably chaired by the distinguished member for uh, Pokot South, the Honorable David Kossing. Uh, that committee, as you know, Honorable Chair, uh, deals with matters energy uh, uh, to a very large extent, yeah, alongside other matters under the commercial uh, ambit. Uh, so, Honorable Speaker, uh, I come before you uh, confident, truly confident, that uh, with the nomination by His Excellency, the President, uh, for me to be the cabinet secretary for energy and petroleum, I come with the competencies, the necessary competencies that are required to handle the docket. Yes, uh, I, I'm extremely confident that this docket I can be able to manage given my background, both academic and professional, and ultimately, uh, again, uh, parliamentary. Uh, yeah. That will Thank do. You. Yeah. <coughs> that will do, uh, nominee. For purposes of proceedings, all members will address you as nominee. No causing around, it's just a nominee. So nominee, I'll invite the debate speaker to be the first to ask a question. Uh, Honorable Wandai, uh, my first question to you, my question is where you're coming from and where you're going. So where you're coming from, as leader of minority party in the National Assembly, it has been your duty to hold government to account. On many occasions, you opposed government proposals. What shift in ideology will allow you to satisfactorily serve as cabinet secretary in government? And how will you demonstrate your how will you demonstrate your commitment to the bottom-up economic transformation agenda? Uh, my second question is about where you're going, something topical that Kenyans are asking. On the 14th of July, 2024, IPRA, the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, announced a marginal increase in fuel prices. However, once people you know, made an analysis, it revealed a notable increase in uh, the road maintenance levy from eight shillings to 25 shillings per liter, despite uh, the, the public rejected that uh, increment. What are your thoughts about the surge in the road maintenance levy? Do you propose uh, to address, well, how do you propose to address it? Should you be approved as cabinet secretary for energy and petroleum? Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, first and foremost, uh, when I was sitting in the house, indeed I still sit in the house before I, I eventually resign if uh, you 
uh, agreed to approve my nomination. Honorable Speaker, I was simply playing my role. And it must be understood clearly uh, that under the Article 94, 95, and 96 of the Constitution, Parliament, regardless of which side you are sitting, has got a collective duty to oversight uh, the executive, okay, to legislate and also to present uh, uh, our electors. It only follows uh, that uh, uh, I happen to have come from the party to which the president and his executive do not belong. And let me say this, Honorable Speaker, because there's a misnomer here. People tend to think that it follows, it goes without say that uh, the president and his team must come from the majority side. In America, for instance, you know very well, yeah, uh, that despite President Joe Biden being a Democrat, the leader of majority in the House of Reps is a Republican. Okay? When you go to the Senate, the Senate is there, uh, it's there, vice versa. But therefore, I was simply playing my role first and foremost as a member of parliament under Article 95 of the Constitution. Okay? But above all, I was the leader of the minority, and therefore I was leading my troops in putting the government or the executive to check without any prejudice. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, there is no contradiction whatsoever in what I believed in then and what I believe in now. I simply believe that I have been called to perform a national duty. And as a patriotic Kenyan, I have responded positively to the call, <laughs> Honorable Speaker. And therefore, I will be open to so scrutiny. So, Honorable Wandai, that's exactly what you wanted to hear, because the Kenyan public yes. wanted to hear and have that assurance. Thank you very much. But I think you've explained it well. Thank you very <laughs> it much. It was not to put you on the defense. It was just for the country to understand the shift. Secondly, the, next question. the issue of fuel prices is a very emotive matter, extremely emotive. But I will come to it perhaps later. For now, let me just say this. That the road maintenance levy is one of the levies and taxes that constitute the, the ultimate pump price of fuel. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't fall within the limit of my ministry if I get approved. The road maintenance levy is a levy which is proposed by the Ministry of Transport and uh, uh, Roads. And it goes through the normal process of parliamentary approval, I believe. Thank you. <coughs> Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. CS nominee, you have said that uh, nothing changes in the things you believe in. And I want to believe if nothing changes, your publicly known stand on the fight against corruption will continue being so even when you join the ministry if you are approved. And in view of that, you do know the problems that pervade the power sector, especially in regards to the cost of generation of power and what is offloaded to the Kenya Power and Lighting Company. That uh, independent power producers in this country, over the years since the early 60s and 70s, to date, continue to sell very expensive power to KPLC, while that power that we get, we generate from Kenjan, including the green power in Olkaria and uh, uh, Marsabi between power, the solar farms in northern Kenya, are much cheaper. Will Kenyans or can Kenyans trust you that when you take office, should you be approved, that you will literally do what they call biting the bullet and fight the power cartels in power generation and uh, uh, sale with the PPA agreements that are there to make sure that Kenyans eventually can enjoy lower costs of power. Because there is power that is cheaper and it's there. But you are still on thermal energy 
when we have cheaper geothermal energy, we have cheaper wind energy, we have cheaper solar energy. Can we uh, get that assurance from you that you can bite the bullet, relook at many of those contracts, of course, within the law that were procured corruptly at the, to the great detriment of the people of Kenya? You hold, oh. we'll take another one, Junet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to put to the nominee that, uh, Mr. Speaker, the nominee is somebody known to me very well, having been his whip for now two, three years in Parliament. And there is somebody who believes, the way I know him, he stands with what he, on what he believes. But having said that, I want to, info, to tell him that working uh, in Parliament, the way we have worked in Parliament together as a whip and a minority leader, and working in the executive are uh, two different things, two different ball games completely. Having said that, I want to ask him that there are issues that are of energy in nature that require immediate attention. For example, issues of uh, electrification. You know very well, nominee, that there are places you know and I know who have not seen electricity since God created Kenya. They are still in darkness. You know very well that those places have suffered quite some time and they need urgent help, attention. But promises have been given year in, year out by people who have taken up jobs like the way you are taking. So what Marshall plan or what measures are you thinking of to help in the next three years, those areas that have not seen light, not the, the light of God, but the light of human being, who have not seen it, what are you planning? Secondly, that is last mile. My final question is, this country, the way it is now, and you, the, the, your predecessor, the nominee that was holding your docket, has come here to be vetted on another, for another docket. He has said that the networks and the systems of the electricity has, the, has gone down because of uh, non-repair or something like that for many years. So it requires a lot of money to be upgraded. And I asked him about these uh, shutdowns that happen in the country that affect airports, that affect uh, even hospitals sometimes. I am praying that it does not happen when you are the minister, if you are approved. But if, what are you thinking? What are you planning to do about that matter? Because Kenyans are sick and tired of missing electricity without any notice. Thank you very much. You can answer those. Yes, uh, Honorable Speaker. Let me start uh, with the Honorable uh, Majority Leader's question about corruption within the energy sector and whether I am prepared to deal with it. Honorable Speaker, my stand on Corruption also remains unchanged. I may not be an angel, but I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, throughout my life, yes, I have fought uh, very, very seriously against corruption in all its manifestations. Honorable Speaker, there are two problems with the matter of the IPPs from where I sit. And I want to explain a little bit. First and foremost, our energy sector is has undergone or is supposed to be undergoing what we call unbundling. Unlike many other jurisdictions which have got a vertical uh, uh, integration uh, kind of structure, our sector has been unbundled and therefore we have got agencies or entities that do the, the, the drilling of the wells if it comes to geothermal. There are entities that do the generation of, of, of power itself, entities that transmit, ultimately entities that distribute to the consumers. Uh, Honorable Speaker, we have these IPPs largely at the generation level, where they compete with state entities such as Kengen and to some extent even GDC. And I'll come to that later again. Honorable Speaker, when it comes to the point of generation. 
I have noticed a problem that I will have to tackle head on. One, you know that in our mix of energy sources, geothermal is one of the clean energy sources and the cheapest. In fact, Honorable Speaker, Kenya is lucky. It is the sixth largest uh, source of geothermal and in the world. In the world, Honorable Speaker. We are lucky because if you look at, if you have, if you had a look at uh, a satellite image or picture of the earth, we fall within what you call the ring of fire. Those are areas where we have got geothermal resources worldwide. Kenya happens to be within that uh, region. And therefore, we are blessed as a country to have geothermal resources that could help our energy be among the cheapest, Honorable Speaker. But what do you see? GDC, which is supposed to do what we call uh, the risking, yes, because not every private player can do the drilling of the wells. So GDC is supported by taxpayers' money to do the drilling and therefore allow the sites to be commercially utilized by other players building engine. But now you find that GDC has dug the wells. They have identified, the, they, have, they have got the sites which are ready for, for development commercially. And you find that licenses for a number of those sites have been given to private entities, these so-called IPPs, a number of whom are not utilizing the sites. They have kept them for purposes of spe speculation. And therefore, starving Kennedy, which has got excess capacity of opportunities to generate more power, or geothermal power for that matter. Okay, so the country is losing on that account alone. Persons who have been given licenses, what we call geothermal concessions, and they are holding those licenses, which are public assets in my view, whilst Kenyan, which is a publicly owned entity, at least that's by 70%, has the capacity, the expertise, the resources, is not able to get access to those sites to be able to generate for us energy. So that I will have to deal with. But I will have to do, deal with them in a, by way of first engaging with the Attorney General to see what we can do, what we can do about these licenses that are remaining idle without necessarily exposing the country, of course, okay, uh, to litigation and the likes. But eventually to see to it that in the new dispensation, if such licenses are to be issued, there must be conditions that you get a license, but you have got certain terms within which to play. That is one. Two, it is this animal that we call take or pay. These are IPPs which have been given, uh, which, which have signed PPAs, the Power Producing Agreements, with Kenya Power and Lighting Company. And uh, the agreement is such that whatever they generate, you either take it, or if you don't take it, you still pay for it. So really, that is not sustainable. And they are very, very, very long-term agreements. Some running to as long as 20 years. Again, I will have to engage the Office of the Attorney General on how to deal with this. But eventually, of course, I am, I'm aware that there is currently a moratorium on the uh, engagement of IPPs following the presidential tax force on PPAs that was established in 20, 2021. Even if that moratorium is lifted eventually, we shall have to ensure that whatever PPAs we get into do not put us in that or in such a situation. As a matter of fact, my view is that eventually, because currently we have a very robust legal framework, since the enactment of the Energy Act of 2019, one of my first duties within 100 days, if I am lucky to be approved, would be to ensure that the requisite regulations are brought to fruition because there are, there are different stages of processing so that the country can benefit fully, can reap the full potential from these 
a robust uh, legislative framework. But then, if, that, if it comes to that, I foresee a situation where this country will not need this kind of lopsided agreements. We may actually want to, to have an energy auction kind of situation, where you produce your, generate your energy, you take it to the auction floor, as it were, and then we buy when we need it as, as, as consumers, through KPLC, of course. Okay? That is a futuristic uh, view, my, my honorable speaker. Let me, let me quickly go to the next question, because I'm trying to be, okay. Uh, yes, I understand Honorable Jeanette's uh, view that the executive is not like parliament. I'm here to experience that, because Honorable Speaker, you know, I have never worked in the executive <laughs> throughout my life. Throughout my life. You will get to learn. I, yes, yes, so I will get to learn. But and I'm a first learner, I believe, Honorable Speaker. So I don't have any qualms that I will be able to fit in uh, fairly well. Honorable Speaker, the immediate issues, which are of concern to nearly all members of the National Assembly, I being one of them, at least for now. The issue of rural electrification, the issue of last mile. Honorable Speaker, I said from the outset that our energy sector is supposed to have been unbundled. But I must add that that unbundling is not yet complete. Why do I say so? You still find Kenya Power and Lighting Company competing with Rerek in last mile connections. Honorable Speaker, Kenya Power and Lighting Company is a publicly listed company. It's supposed to be running commercially. It's supposed to be profit motivated, if you ask me. And therefore, it cannot be able to do what Nerek was envisaged to do. That is to extend power. Nominee. Yes. I want to guide you. Yes. You have been nominated to be the CS energy and petroleum. Instead of pontificating on what they are, tell us, if you are confirmed, what do you want to do with them? That will be your vision, and that will be your message to the country. Because when you engage in a, a complaining type of narrative, it doesn't give hope to the country. Let me endeavor to give hope now to the country. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, therefore, in. in Mr. Speaker, Mr. Yes. Speaker uh, the nominee is trying to shed off the opposition leadership slowly. So he's, 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 no, he he's said. He's, the, what the energy called load shedding? He, <laughs> shedding. he said he's a very fast learner. So <laughs> he's, now he's, he's learned already. Thank you for yes. the guidance, Honorable Speaker. Yes. Uh, let me say this. Really, Even in, those uh, parastatals you're talking about, they are going to, yeah. to be under your watch. Okay, so let me you say tell this. us what you want them to be. As a, as a policy uh, direction, yes. I would endeavor, first and foremost, to separate or to reduce the overlap okay, in the functions of KPLC and REREC. Okay? And uh, to empower REREC fully to be able to undertake the mandate of last mile connections. Okay? Uh, so that KPLC can concentrate, can focus on this commercial uh, function, business. Is that better, Honorable Speaker? You are trying. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, finally, Honorable Speaker, on Honorable Jeanette's question, it is indeed true that we have got uh, fairly uh, uh, dilapidated infrastructure, especially for transmission. Uh, again, you, you must also understand that uh, these are legacy problems before they coming into being of Ketraku, oh, it was the sole duty of ma or mandate of KPLC to do the whole business from generation to distribution. Uh, some of this infrastructure was inherited and uh, uh, some improvements have been done but there's still room for uh, further improvement, especially if we have to take 
electricity uh, uh, I mean uh, optimally uh, to those who need it. Honorable Speaker, we have situations where we are not able to evacuate power from the generators okay, to the end user because of lack of transmission capacity. That's something I'll be working closely with the agencies under my, in my docket to be able to, uh, to fast track the modernization of the infrastructure. And especially when it comes to the last mile connectivity, we are going to work closely with RERIC uh, 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 together with KPLC again uh, uh, by way of uh, engaging with the development partners uh, to be able to finance this process. I'm aware, Honorable Speaker, before I conclude, that there was a proposal in the, the now defunct uh, uh, Finance Act 2020, 2024 for some money for each constituency, uh, but uh, as a matter of fact, 50 million shillings. In the budget, yes. In the budget, yes. Uh, now that has been removed in the wake of the withdrawal of the finance uh, bill 2024. That, but let me assure my colleague members and the public generally that even with that, all is not lost. We are going to work uh, very systematically with the REREC and KPLC uh, to engage the development partners uh, to help us uh, finance uh, this function. I indeed, even as we speak, there is a project going on which is being funded by the World Bank, okay, uh, in terms of extending powers to those areas where the national grid has not reached, what we call the off-grids. And they have been very helpful, Honorable Speaker. I must commend uh, the management of both KPLC and REREC, because as we speak, there are islands on, the, on Lake Victoria, which previously had no power. And since the national grid cannot be extended to those areas e economically, they have resorted to the off-grid uh, power production, which is really helping those areas. We want to extend this to other areas, especially the far-flung areas of northeastern, okay? Yes, to use solar power uh, uh, to be able to light uh, up those areas. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Naisola. To the nominee, there has been talk about breaking Kenya Power's monopoly. I want to hear your view. This is a conversation that Kenyans have had for a very long time. Shouldn't Kenya have a choice, depending on your, you know, the costs, the operational efficiency, and all that, whether people should um, be able to have a choice? The second question is that uh, the Auditor General revealed issues related to meters specifically the absence of check meters, malfunctioning check meters, and inconsistencies between check meters and the main meters. And that is why people get a different bill. It doesn't, it doesn't match. And so I wanted to ask, these are the cartels we have discussed for the last two days, people you know, who, don't, who don't want this country to move forward. And how do you intend to deal with these electricity cartels and address this irregularity in the metering? Yes, Nelson, we'll take a bundle before you unbundle. Honorable Wanda, you are heavily opposed to the G2G deal. Now, if this house approves you, you are literally going to oversight the same G2G uh, arrangement because it's still on progress. Has your position shifted, uh, or will your position shift if this committee approves you? Posing, take the third one as well. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Honorable Wandai, it's a big problem in the entire Western Kenya in terms of clean power, power, uh, blackouts, the entire northern Kenya, I mean uh, western Kenya, that is from uh, Nyanza, uh, South Rift and North Rift. If, should you get uh, the favor of the house, how will you tackle that very fundamental issue that is almost historic? Number two, Honorable Wandai, where is Talo oil in Turkana? Go and find out where that animal is. Should have actually produced oil in Kenya. <coughs> should be an uh, oil producing country. But it disappeared. There's a lot of money that has been sunk and nothing is going on. Where is Talo oil? Thank you, Speaker. Okay, let me endeavor to answer these three. Are very short, we can take f the next Kikaria. Wow, 
Yeah, but they're mouthful. Those are four, and they're all very short. <laughs> you should answer them as with brevity the same way they are asked. Uh, thank you, <coughs> uh, Speaker. Just want to follow up on what uh, uh, Naisula was talking about, about metering. This is just uh, maybe having been in the energy sector for a while, maybe you need to consider REREC going to the point of even metering uh, a customer. Because what happens is that REREC is given the option to take that drop of a wire to a customer. But now they leave the metering to KKPLC, who never take it, and we have over like three years, you take three years before you're metered. I think it is important for you to look at uh, the metering being done by REREC, and then REREC can be able to inform uh, KPLC for purposes of them now starting to, uh, to, to do the charging. Uh, but uh, w uh, there, there is this question of, uh, uh, customers make applications. Then it takes too long to a point that we encourage illegal uh, contractors to come and put uh, uh, lines and transmission. And then when KPLC realizes there is that, the first thing they do is to go and bring down all the poles. Yet, I, I, and my committee then had to go to Navaholo where they, they were to be paid 3.5, and they took too long only for somebody else uh, to come in to, to do that. I think it is important for you to address uh, the issues uh, ailing uh, KPLC so that we don't, and KPLC is a, good, uh, is a good, by the way, in the Energy Act 2019, we do, the, the KPLC is not a monopoly. By the way, anybody can, can apply and get a license for them to be able to do uh, distribution of, K, uh, of uh, power in the country. And that is in the Act. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Okay, Honorable Speaker, thank you. Uh, let me start with the Honorable Naisula. And I, and I, I agree with the Honorable uh, Gikaria. Uh, the 2019 Energy Act has actually laid the basis or foundation for other players to come in the energy distribution space. But even as this happens, because it only happen again once we have put in place the requisite uh, uh, regulations, the subsidiary legislation. But even as this happens, Honorable Speaker, we still need a robust KPLC. And I'll say why. <clears throat> Now, KPLC, because of the legacy, of course, issues, has got an elaborate infrastructure layout across the country. The competencies, the personnel, and so on and so forth, the technical capacity to do what it is supposed to do. In any event, uh, KPLC actually is the revenue collector, okay? Revenue that goes all the way up to the upstream the transmitters, the generators, and so on and so forth. So we still need to ensure that AKPLC is run uh, 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 optimally, is efficient, is effective, even as we open that space of distribution to other players, as envisaged under the Energy Act 2019. What I foresee as doing going forward, and I will have discussions with my team if I'm approved, is that we may want to create zones, utilization of these uh, resources, so that we avoid uh, conflicts if and when this uh, 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 process uh, begins. And therefore, in short, the monopoly by KPLC is no longer entrenched in law. It is essentially a matter of practice, and we shall deal with it in the fullness of time. Two is the question of voltimeters. This I will have to inquire more about, because what I have been briefed is that we have had problems in procurement of both meters, actually of all, really, of all items. Yes, but meters of Mosul and transformers. What has happened is that these cartels that Honorable Chunga talked about and Honorable Kwaech, I think, 
uh, yeah, because thing. Uh, these cartels have become so pervasive, Honorable Speaker, that they can't allow a tendering process to proceed to, to conclusion and awards be made without creating roadblocks. We all know for sure that KPLC being a publicly listed company with majority shareholding being government is governed by the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act of 2015, which act, as we all know, Honorable Speaker and members, gives room for tenderers, <laughs> yes, for bidders, uh, to lodge complaints at every other stage. But that is being abused, Honorable Speaker, by entrenched cartels. And we shall have to work closely with my colleagues in the ministry to deal with this menace, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Koech, on the matter of G G2G deal, the G2G deal, it's indeed true, Honorable Speaker, uh, that uh, I, alongside my other colleagues, who are vehemently opposed to this scheme. Hmm? But let me tell you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, that was then. And I was doing it as a, my duty to put government to check. I think you already answered that question when you are responding to the deputy speaker. But this is specific. So on this okay. G2G, Honorable Speaker, yes, okay. I am aware that it is running up to end of 2025. That gives me ample time to go and study uh, the, its impact, its workings, and understand it, and for me to be able to offer uh, appropriate uh, uh, guidance, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Kosing, my chair, my good chair, the matter of power outages or inefficiencies in the Western Kenya belt. Well, but it is more pervasive in the Western Kenya. But I'll explain why. Sometimes you can have a blackout for 12 hours. I have already. I have already engaged officers, of course informally, in the ministry. And if I am approved, if I am eventually appointed as CS Energy, I am going to fast track the development of transmission lines, okay, with the requisite capacity to evacuate power and take to the consumers, not only in Western Kenya but across the country. And in Western Kenya specifically, I'm going to ensure that the Tarquel or Tum Kitale line is completed and commissioned in the shortest time possible. That will deal with power issues in Pokot, in Kitale, in all that area. I will also ensure similarly that the Kibos or Kisumu, Kakamega, Musaga line is also completed. Similarly, the Narok Bomet line has to be completed within the shortest time possible for the entire southern Nyanza region, including Kisi and Nyamira counties. And Bomet, of course, southern Nyanza concludes Migori, Homa Bay, and, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the islands, <laughs> yes, in Leon Lake Victoria. So this is something I will actually give utmost priority, Honorable Speaker. Northern Kenya is, of course, at the heart of this strategy. As we speak, there is a line from Luangalani the Angalani to, to Masabit, that has to be completed similarly in record time, and the line from Masabit to Isiolo, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the second limb of this question by Honorable Kosing is on the matter of tallow oil. Honorable Speaker, this project is not dead. It could have taken a break but I've taken it upon myself if I'm appointed to ensure that it is revived. Because tallow oil is on the ground. What it lacks is the requisite financial capacity to be able to commercially uh, uh, develop the oil reserves in the lower Lokichar, in the, in the south Lokichar uh, basin, Honorable Speaker. We are going to work closely with tallow oil with the guidance of the Attorney General to get to source for a strategic partner who can bring in some financial uh, capital 
to be able to have this project completed. But again, time is of essence, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, you know that Kenya is a signatory to the Paris Agreement on carbon emissions. Kenya is a signatory to the Paris Agreement on carbon emissions. And if you recall the outcome of the conference, the UN conference on climate change, COP27, in Egypt in 2022, if we don't move with speed and extract this oil into Kana, we may be time bad because we shall face serious restrictions, including even restrictions from potential financiers. Because we, the, the world is moving steadily from fossil fuels to clean energy, Honorable Speaker. And Kenya is not an island. And therefore, it is, I'm going to treat this matter of tallow oil and the oil in South Lokichar Basin with the utmost urgency. Honorable Gekaria, my good friend, member for Nakuru East, I agree with him totally. Nothing stops Cleric from putting in place meters. They can actually do the last mile up to the point of metering. Okay? And then a framework is established for handover to KPLC for purposes of billing, Honorable Speaker. This will create synergy and enhance efficiency and contribute to customer satisfaction, Honorable Speaker. Again, the matter of applications taking too long, I have discussed. And I've been made aware of the bottlenecks that the, uh, the utility companies have been facing. This again, we shall work on. The question of illegal connections is not necessarily a matter of delayed, uh, uh, delayed in processing applications. The matter of illegal connections will still be there even if the applications are processed on time. And we have to deal with it separately or differently. And my proposal, and it's I work- It's a crime, you know that. It's a crime, of course. Yes. It is a crime, but you must also live with the reality that some of these areas where this, where this, this, uh, this practice is uh, rampant are not easy to access even by the officers of Kenya Power and Lighting. Yes. Yes. So we are going to work on a proposal of course, together with Parliament and uh, the Attorney General, to, to pursue an option of bulk metering. Okay? In those kind of situations, we, the Kenya Power Lighting can be empowered to, uh, to identify uh, one entity or one person who will then be billed, and then he distributes the power to the, to the rest of the The law already consumers. allows them to do that. Why don't they? Yes, the, that's why I said from the outset, Honorable Speaker, that to, I will, anyway, you are not the minister, so I will need to ad address it when you first track the issue of the there. regulations. Yeah, we'll go to the next batch. <coughs> we'll start with Robert. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the nominee, um, you know, when Jubilee came into power in 2013, they marketed the last mile connectivity. Yeah, very, very well. In fact, uh, citizens were of the opinion that they would all be connected within like a month or so. And so that has brought uh, a lot of pressure on members of parliament because whenever uh, people are not connected, they have this belief that the member of parliament is seeking to only power some areas in their constituencies and not others. It, uh, I would like you to, from your opinion, uh, you know, having, having of course, uh, study the situation to tell us what will you do to ensure that this pressure is taken out of members of parliament because uh, members uh, you know the, the public thinks it's a, it's a, it's our issue now the other issue is um, is an issue of public confidence uh, honorable and i in that office and considering that you have been also with us in the minority um you know and, and I'm saying this because you know what Kenyans out there have said, and it will be important for you to address them from this, uh, from this point. What can you tell those Kenyans that believe that you took advantage of the young Kenyan demonstrators, some of whom who died while they were demonstrating, so that you could uh, negotiate your way into government? Uh, uh, 
Owen? Uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, after that boom from your former deputy, I, I, I want you <laughs> uh, uh, from your former deputy. I just want to, you to focus on cost of power, yeah. uh, Honourable Wanai. Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I would like to get uh, full attention. Uh, Honorable Wandai, the cost of power in this country is, is such that it is over the roof. If you get a power bill, you look at it, you know, you're paying so many things apart from, uh, in fact, the units that you, you are paying for actually become uh, a small part of what you're paying for. For this country to rise or fall in terms of manufacturing, in terms of production, the cost of living and the prices of items, it all falls and all rises on the sort of the p of power cost, for which in your statements you have said this country in parliament, many times in parliament you've said that the cost of living in this country is very, very high. But one of the biggest contributors of that cost, of that co high cost of living is power. You are in the middle of it. Apart from thinking about reticulation of power, apart from thinking about uh, all these other things, you have a big elephant in the room. How do you bring the cost of power in this country to, to reduce the cost of life and also to increase manufacturing, industrialization, and all those other things? Thank you, Honorable Wandai. Rugara. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Domini, the ministry you are just about to take over if this committee and the House approves you is one of the key ministries in the country akin to roads, water, and every Kenyan is looking upon you to be connected to electricity. And there are not two options to it. Even before I ask you the question, it's good to know that there are historical injustices in terms of power supply in the country, such that take the case of the year 2017, the Raka constituency was at 9.5% connectivity to the national grid. At the same time, Gatundu South constituency was at 100%. These are all equal Kenyans. There really should not be that disparity. Number two, we have schools. Schools where electricity is just but mandatory. Yet, those areas are not connected to the national greed and the children are supposed to compete competitively in national exams which are standard my question to you is would you be subscribing to a form of affirmative action in terms of electricity supply to constituencies which have lagged behind and it's just not a Tharaka you go to Mwinge North you go to Mbalambala, which is also my neighbor, Bere North, Bere South. These actually have been discriminated against. And therefore, would you be prepared to take affirmative action in respect of those constituencies? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to Honorable Opio Wandai, the nominee. Uh, my colleagues have talked about uh, electricity. You have talked about the transformers. Do you see we need to move away from oil-based transformers because every other day you will hear people uh, removing the oil from the transformers and we have got transformers which do not work sometimes or we have got a shortage of transformers. So do you see, will you do research? Because I've done, if you go to the Western world, you do not see any transformer and I know you've been there. So you do not see transformers there. Do you think we can have KPLC having a company where it will be having uh, fiber optic? I know they are doing it right now, but because of the ICT of uh, this government to deliver uh, fiber optic to each and every place, because it's a vast network as you have spoken about it. The last one is about the Kenya Pipeline Refinery. Um, your predecessor, if you are confirmed, who was here, Davis Chirchir, he said they were looking at it once um, the oil, which uh, 
Honorable Posing has talked about the Tolo oil and all that, once it's done. But I believe if that refinery was there, we could even get cheaper fuel and refine it the way it used to be. So do you think it is possible under your watch if you are confirmed? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable. You can answer those. Honorable Speaker. Yes, in tis, indeed it is true. Uh, that is, with respect to Honorable Mbui's question, that members of parliament are facing serious pressure from the public on the matter of last mile uh, connectivity in the respective constituencies. Uh, because again, it has been taken for granted that this is the work of the MPs, okay? Which they have been doing, of course, very diligently, diligently in collaboration with the REREC. Uh, Honorable Speaker, what we need to do, in my view, is to properly resource REREC. Properly resource REREC as we work on the efficiencies for this role electrification to be fast tracked. As we speak, the data I have is that we are at about 76% penetration. That, of course, is theoretical. Because, you know, in some areas, it's as low as 10%. While in others, it is over 100%. Yes. So I'm very much alive to that fact. In fact, we need also to bring on board counties, called county governments. Honorable Speaker, under Schedule 4 of the Constitution, the counties have got a role also in energy, uh, also in street light, okay? What has happened in the past is that Rerek has been able to build street lights. Which street lights go off soon after they are commissioned? For lack of payment of bills and maintenance, which they presume is the mandate of the counties, Honorable Speaker. So I, my, my view, this set of affairs is not tenable. We must make a decision, and I'll be coming back to Parliament. Okay? We must make a decision oh, as to whether to empower REREC fully, fully, to be able to be in charge of this uh, uh, street lighting, in, up to including uh, payment of bills. But more importantly, if we can now move away from the grid, national grid, and establish solar street lights. Okay, which would be easy to, to manage in the long term. That's a discussion we must have urgently because these are important uh, facilities. Honorable Speaker, on the matter of public confidence as raised by Honorable Mbui, you know, Honorable Speaker, I am very clear in my mind, <coughs> extremely clear, because I've been, on, I've been on this space for quite some time. time, time. The Gen Zs or the youth, we are not raising any different issues from the issues you and I, Honorable we have raised over the, over the years. They could have had a different style, okay? But the issues they are raising were pertinent issues, which you all agree must be, dealt, must be dealt with, okay? And therefore, it is not proper to say that we have taken advantage of the Gen Z's uh, uh, clamor to, to get into government. First and foremost, Honorable Speaker, I never applied to join the executive, but I was pleasantly surprised and felt greatly honored <laughs> that my name was recommended. You and His Excellency the President went ahead to nominate you me. You know the facts. Just answer the question. So, Honorable Speaker, <laughs> so Honorable Speaker, uh, I still maintain the view that uh, uh, we are not in any way. Uh, uh, in betrayal of the court. Don't allow Mbui to bully you. Of the youth, yes. And have no apologies. Yes. yes. But again, again, Honorable Speaker, I conclude on that one. You know, you know, we are basically uh, coming on board uh, in a paradigm shift. I'm very pleased that the President has actually declared that we have to adopt a paradigm shift in the management of government and state affairs. And I'm most privileged, if I'm a In our country. In our country. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. We are living in different times. In yes. Yes, we must also think differently. 
Sorry. <laughs> honorable Speaker, uh, Honorable Baya, you are right. The, the, cost, the cost of power is exorbitant in Kenya. Even if we compare ourselves to our neighboring countries, especially Ethiopia and, uh, and even Uganda, really. But part of the reason why our cost of power is high, is too high, is the exorbitant amount of commercial and technical losses that Kenya Power especially incurs. Kenya Power loses up to 23% of the power it buys from the generators. Okay? In other words, it doesn't sell. Almost 23% of the power it buys from the generators. Inefficiency and recklessness. You yes, know, there are many you factors. You assure the country that this will stop. This is going to be managed. I can't say it will stop, Honorable Speaker, because in any scientific process, there can be losses. But Very they, have, they have to be reasonable losses, Honorable Speaker. Yes. So we are going to work closely with the KPLC, and I'm happy, Honorable Speaker, by the work the KPLC management is doing currently. As a matter of fact, I'm privy to the information that they have done some turnaround. I'm not allowed by the rules of the CMA to get into details. But they have done some turnaround, and they may post some good figures in the coming... Don't be prejudiced by briefs you have received. <laughs> You'll get there and learn. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'm just being optimistic. Yes. <laughs> and giving the country hope. <laughs> to borrow your words. Yes. Okay. Continue. Honorable Speaker, let me dash to the question, sorry, by Honorable Daoud. Murugara. Murugara first. Murugara, yes. Uh, Honorable Speaker, it is true there have been historical injustices. Okay? And we must work together in terms of addre addressing these injustices or these imbalances. We must correct them That's systematically. But I must also throw a challenge to our, my colleagues in the National Assembly because I'm aware that this lopsided allocation of resources, especially on energy and electricity, is also coming from us in Parliament at the budget time. The agencies, the ministries is, are receiving printed estimates with figures which they cannot change, they can't touch. Which figures are scary, Honorable Speaker? You find one constituency being allocated upwards of 400 million Kenya shillings, while another one is getting a paltry 10 million Kenya shillings in the same financial year. So we must also actually do some introspection as a house to help us uh, in the ministry, if and when I am approved, to deal with this issue. You know, once you bring printed estimates, the ministry, the agencies have got no leg room. They have no room to maneuver. Okay? So these imbalances, these injustices may continue uh, uh, within, as, as we watch, Honorable Speaker. Uh, there is also the issue of solars for schools. There's, there is currently a very robust project being undertaken by REREC, the solar for schools. We want to follow through this project to ensure that at least every school in this country is able to benefit. Point of order, no, no, no. Point of order. Uh, uh, George? Me. Point of order. Solar has been tried from time immemorial. It works only for one month, two months, it just dies. And those schools will remain in the books of KPLC or whoever mm -hmm. that they are connected through solar when actually it is not working. So it doesn't make sense whatsoever for Kenya Power or for Relic to introduce or to go back to that solar business. Let us get connection to the national grid so that we also assured of constant electricity supply. Point of order, Chairman, on the same. Yes. And you know, this has been, this was done mostly from the regions mm. we, I come from. It is so that if you do electricity, the households around the school also are connected to power. But now if you give us solars, you're just giving to the schools, they're vandalized, they're not working, and you continue to marginalize us on issues to do ele with electricity. We don't want the solars. It is vendor-driven, the solars. 
yeah, point of order, Chair, I, I just want to urge my colleagues that, uh, you know, the nominee is actually a nominee. And we are addressing the nominee like the CS for Energy, a decision Which we are yet to not. make. Because uh, the pressure is on him now dealing with solar versus, uh, you know, regular energy. So No, it's important for okay. him so to know. Probabilities. We are working on the probabilities. It, you are being we warned of landmines ahead. Okay, thank you. Yes. I've taken note. Yeah. I've taken note, Honorable Speaker. Let me just proceed quickly to Honorable Dawood. Yes, I, I've gotten your point on the possibility of moving from oil-based transformers to something else. I need to check with the technical people to be able to, uh, to give, give some feedback on that. Honorable Speaker, there's an issue raised, uh, the Honorable Dawood raised, on the Kenya oil refinery. Did you mean refinery or the Kenya, Kenya pipeline? Yes. You know, I am aware that uh, the Kenya o oil refinery has uh, or is in the process of being acquired by the Kenya Pipeline Company. I will need to get into, into the details as to the rationale behind this. But I still foresee a very big role for the Kenya oil refinery, at least its installation. Firstly, in terms of uh, the processing of the crude oil, if and when it, it finally flows from the south of Kichar, <laughs> yes, to Mombasa. But more importantly, Honorable Speaker, I have come to the realization that this country does not have provision for a strategic reserve of oil. That uh, we can actually, one of these days, wake up and find that we can't bring oil, oil to Mombasa. And then, after some few days or weeks, we are ground to a halt as a country. So I think this facility in Mombasa will, can still be useful in future, once and when, once, once we, once we uh, work on the strategic oil, oil, oil for the country that can last for at least 90 days. That's the best practice, uh, uh, universally, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. <coughs> you have not answered if KPLC can do the fiber a company would yes. it be possible or not? I will also pursue this. Yes. On Mary, speak, yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Nomini, you've talked about customer satisfaction. I put it to you that uh, KPLC customers are the most dissatisfied. And I want to believe that there are serious management challenges to do with the leadership of KPLC. Why do I say that? A simple task, but of urgent nature, like restoring a falling post or a collapsing post, goes a time bomb. It can, it can collapse any time, it's posing danger, and in certain instances it has occasioned the deaths. It will take forever before it is restored. Actually, there is one about to, to fall onto my house. You will call regional, uh, the regional, so-called regional directors. There is no response. Secondly, restoring power when there are those frequent out, uh, outages. A transformer has failed or has busted, and some of them are in, in learning institutions in our regions. It is adversely affecting learning. In my constituency, some of them have taken more than six months, and it's not only in my constituency, it cuts across the country. If you are actually uh, approved, you, you tell us what you're going to do about some of these management issues. Meter acquisition, you have applied for meters. And I'm told even these meters are already being adulterated by the, the, the cartels in, in the industry. You will wait forever. Kenyans have to bribe to get meters. Now, knowing the one day that we know, I want to believe you're going to fight corruption in the energy sector. Sometimes, villagers have had to come together in a chama, a, a, a chama for power so that they put money together to procure an independent electrician to restore power. This is the Kenya we are living in, Honorable Wandai. And finally, you've talked about um, uh, 
making sure that all the power lines, the pro projects that are in complete or ongoing, that you will make sure they are completed in the shortest time possible. And I'm asking myself, Honorable Wandai, where are you going to get the money from? Because after rationalization of the budget and the collapse of the finance bill, which you strongly objected to reject the bill, can you tell us where you're going to get resources to finance all those projects? Because I want to believe the reason they are incomplete is because of funding. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Nomini, there are some key transmission lines that are yet to be constructed. And uh, with the shrinking revenue and reduced headroom to borrow, what are you going to do to ensure that they are done since the country needs them? Honorable Mission Board. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chairman. Honorable Chairman, my, one question, my first question is on environmental concerns. And I'm talking about the proposed Lamu coal power plant. I know there have been some opposition from environmental groups concerned about the impact on the local ecosystem. So my question is, how will you balance energy needs with environmental protection? My second question, it is on the issue of the project dubbed the Lake Turkana Wind Power Project. I know you are once the chair of PAC and I was also in the committee of PAC, and this matter kept on coming and coming each and every time. This project was at a tune of 70 billion, and so many billions had been already utilized. So I, I just want to ask you, do you see that uh, the taxpayers' money had some value to where we are right now in regards to that electrical wind? I know you are not yet the minister for that energy. Maybe you're going to be approved. I want you to check on this, because a lot of money have really been utilized, and yet we don't see any tangible results from that. My last question, it is in reference on what happened in Embakazi on the 2nd of February, where there was, the, there was the explosion, and so many Kenyans were killed and some were injured. Again, there was an explosion by the petroleum tanker in Sashangwani about 11 years back, the other one at Molo. So my concern is, what safe standard measures are you going to put in place to ensure that we save Kenyans from such fatal accidents and any other times? I thank you, Honorable Chairman. Sharia. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mwishmua Wandai. And as my colleague Murugada said, Balambala is, connect, is connected to the national grid. And when we have power outages, you can imagine in my constituency, just to repair some lines took seven months, and the people of Balambala were in the dark for seven months. I appreciate KPLC. I've been trying to call them to fix, which finally they said they will this week. Kindly, can we, can, if approved, could you look into the turnaround or how fast they can attend to faults within the line? Because you can imagine a whole constituency which produces almost 54 megawatts and adds it to the national grid through solar being in the dark for s seven months. How will I explain that to my constituents? So kindly look into that. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. It doesn't require kindness. It requires responsibility. You know, he was my leader, so sometimes I have to treat him with the same respect that I did when he was my leader. It requires responsibility. Nominee, can you answer okay, those? Okay, thank you. I'll try to be brief. <clears throat> and again, uh, Honorable, uh, Honorable Massey is spot on. Yeah, the, the matter of customer satisfaction is uh, known to all of us in terms of services by KPLC. Uh, what I think without really going into details, because I'm here to assume the office. Honorable Speaker, what I think KPLC requires, and it's a giant company, actually employing over 10,000 people. What I think KPLC requires is an urgent, what we call business process reengineering, to look at the totality, okay, of the architecture of the management of KPLC processes and functions. Honorable Speaker, 
Two is the question of transmission lines that are yet to be completed. Honorable Speaker, some of the lines, actually nearly all of the lines that I mentioned earlier on, that I will try to fast track their completion, have got funding. Okay? They have got funding as we speak. And most of the funding came from development partners. So my work will be to work closely with the agencies responsible to have these projects completed within the timelines that are stipulated. The Honorable Mukami again is basically speaks to the question that has been raised by Honorable Masi. Yes. And I will work closely with you if I get the honor of being approved yeah, to see to it that this is done, the matter of completion of these transmission lines. Uh, Honorable Michi, yes. The question of carbon emissions is very serious. But again, we shall have to work closely with all stakeholders to strike a balance, strike a balance between energy needs of the country and environmental protection. That delicate balance uh, will have to be struck, Honorable Speaker. Yes. Uh, Lake Vic uh, uh, just uh, uh, on the same. Yes. Uh, uh, if you allow me, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I don't want to allow myself. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask you a question on nuclear energy. You know, there's a proposal in it's my... It's not the same. No, no, you it's... Uh, a question on coal. That is coal. This is nuclear. So how can it be the same? It's different. Yes. Let him finish answering those questions, then I'll give you... Thank you. Opinion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, Lake Luturkana Wind Project. Uh, I, Honorable Speaker, for sure, this is a matter again uh, of public notoriety. I, I kept hearing about it when I was in the last parliament, I think. Yes, it was within the purview of the Committee on Energy and the PIC then. Uh, I'm aware, uh, despite all the issues that were raised then and even now, that eventually th the power is being generated. Okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, Honorable Speaker, in our Total installed out of our total installed energy uh, capacity, which is about 3,200 megawatts. The wind power is accounting uh, for about 460 megawatts or so, the bulk of which is from this Lecturkana wind. So I will take time once I assume, if and when I assume office, uh, to f establish more details surrounding this project, yes, and to draw lessons from it that could inform our future uh, engagement with similar projects. Yeah. Yeah, Honorable Speaker, yes, again, the issue of gas explosion in Bakasi, uh, Sachangwan, and so on and so forth, it's a question of regulation. It's a question of regulation. I will be working closely with EPRA and the enforcement of the law. Yes, I'll work closely with EPRA to, to, to see to it that uh, uh, these occurrences are a thing of the past. In fact, Honorable Speaker, one of the areas I'll be focusing on, if I get uh, uh, to be appointed, is to push the LPG uptake by the public in terms of cooking, okay? Uh, from the current about 40% to 100% uh, by 20 2028, actually, 2028. That should be the target, Honorable Speaker. And we are going to work closely with the, uh, all the relevant players to ensure that we have, we make it possible for the Kenyan people in the countryside and everywhere else to access gas, clean, clean energy for cooking. And because we can no longer continue in the manner we are continuing of using charcoal, uh, using firewood. It's not sustainable, Honorable Speaker. Yeah. And therefore, if for this to happen, we must put in place a proper enforcement mechanism uh, to, uh, to, uh, to forestall uh, such unfortunate occurrences that have happened in the past. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Shurie of Mbalambala, again, the same issue of response by KPLC that was raised by Honorable Masi. But I'm also happy that the, the solar plant in Garissa is really contributing immensely to the national grid. Currently, solar energy is accounting for about 220 megawatts 
of our total installed uh, capacity, the bulk of which is coming from Garissa. And Balambala to be specific. I'm also happy, Honorable Speaker, to, to notify Honorable Members that there's also a line which I need to fast track, a transmission line from Garissa to Garissa, uh, that if completed will also help in uh, connecting the populace around that area to the national grid. Honorable Bayer, if you allow me, i just finish with him. Yes. Honorable Bayer's question on nuclear energy. He did not finish asking. Now you can ask. I, I would like to say this. You know, um, yes, we must generate electricity through other means, including uh, uh, safe energy like uh, nuclear. Uh, there is a proposal to set up a nuclear plant in a place called Uyombo in Kilifi North Constituency. And this has elicited a lot of reactions. It's not just about environment, it's just about human beings and preparedness of this country in venturing into nuclear energy and uh, nuclear waste and all that whole realm about nuclear. Uh, but the people of Uyombo have said no, they have refused. And uh, looking at many factors, and they have a right, they've been forced, they've been beaten, they have, many things have happened to force them into this nuclear. Would you stand with the people of Uyombo and actually agree with them and look for other sources of energy other than nuclear? Uh, Honorable Speaker, let me just take some two minutes to explain something. You know, first and foremost, Kenya is a um, member state of the International Atomic Energy Agency that regulates matters nuclear across the world. And Kenya has adopted the International Atomic Agency's uh, milestone approach in terms of establishing a nuclear energy plant. In this approach, there are phases that we have to go through. I am informed that the first phase which involves public participation among other things, has been undertaken. But more importantly, Honorable Speaker, we have even gone further and identified a site, an alternative site, as is required under the framework of the IEA. And the site, uh, Honorable Speaker, is in Kwale County. The, the alternate site is, is, in, is in Kilifi County. The alternate, the alternate site is in Kwale County, Honorable Speaker. What I want to assure Honorable Members, even though I haven't assumed the office, is that once I assume the office, if I if I do so, I will revisit the matter. Not as a way of stopping it, but as a way of encouraging a more holistic involvement of all stakeholders as we move forward. Because this country, Honorable Speaker, my view, that is my personal view now, needs nuclear energy. It, it is not only yes. clean, but very cheap. Correct. It will only rival geothermal energy in terms of contributing to our base load. Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Russell. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Speaker. Uh, Honorable Wandai, I think for your information, uh, Lake Tukana Wind Power evacuates 360 megawatts to the national grid. But Marsabit, the main town in the area, is on power. I mean, uh, on uh, diesel generators. Uh, that is the inequality that is there. So my question is, in Vision 2030, we as a country project to be a middle-income country and industrialized. But that cannot happen without having power. Because 3.3, uh, I think, gigawatts is not enough power uh, to seriously run industries. And there are also many interests in the power sector. Cartels, big corporations who have interest. Uh, there are many who have preceded you. Uh, I really want to hear from you, what is it different that you are likely to do? Uh, Honorable Mbuya said something, Juneta said something, and you come from some other corner. Maybe you bring a new type of thinking uh, to all this. Maybe you will share with us. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. Honorable and I, the nominee, I want to look at Kenyans and to tell them what new formula are you going to bring to the energy sector to see the pump of oil in the petrol station go down 
and to see the purchase of electricity in this country goes down by at least 30%. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to follow up where Honorable Masse left, Mary. Uh, billing of Kenya Power, you'll, if you do get uh, through, uh, if there is wrong billing, you have to pay before you even complain. Mm -hmm. It's like KRA. So if you do go in, would you probably talk to them and, you know, the, if there's a dispute, of course you don't pay the whole thing. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, beginning with the Honorable Russell's question, yes, it's, it's indeed true that uh, the, 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 the Turkana power, wind power, the energy from it is not going to Masabit. Okay, and of course this is a f factor of transmission, Honorable Speaker which I said earlier on, yes. And in fact, there are now plans to take it through down to Mombasa. <laughs> yes, to Mariakani. Yeah. So I think we still have to look at our transmission network and see how constructively we can re-engineer it to serve the country better. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Russell has spoken about a very serious issue here. Kenya, of course, aspires to a middle-income economy. This is according to the country's vision 2030, which is in line uh, with uh, the East Africa uh, uh, community's vision 2030 also. Yeah. Honorable Speaker, there is no way we are going to industrialize and therefore grow the economy without an assured supply of clean, reliable power or energy. I was just looking at some statistics, Honorable Speaker. A state like California in the US, which is the same landmass as Kenya, has got an installed capacity of 60,000 megawatts. Uh, the peak requirement, uh, I'm told, is about 40,000 megawatts. Kenya has got uh, an installed capacity of 3,200 megawatts, with a peak requirement of 2,200 uh, megawatts. So we are playing in different leagues, and yet we want to grow through industrialization. My take is that we must increase our installed capacity based on clean energy sources. Geothermal, of course hydro, even if it is not very reliable, because sometimes we have to get prolonged drought, but we must continue to increase this. And that's why I'll be very keen ensuring how the licensing for these geothermal sites is done going forward. We have, to, we have to give the Kenyan the capacity, the mandate to, ex, to generate more power, okay, which then will attract, which then will attract investors. Investors, because once we have got enough power, Honorable Speaker, uh, people will come and establish industries. There's a school of thought that has it that first of all we establish the industrial parks, then power will, I don't think, we have to find a, a, a balance, Honorable Speaker. The fact of the matter is that we need cheap power or energy for us to attract investments and for the economy to grow eventually. Uh, Honorable Mole, the pump price of fuel, we must understand, is not just a simple matter. What contributes to eventual pump price of fuel, I think, are threefold. One is the landed cost. Landed cost at Mombasa, of course, will vary from time to time based on other factors globally, including the war in Ukraine. Now, the other day, you saw the Hamas leader was killed. It creates shocks in the oil market. Correct. All those factors will contribute to the landed price, landing cost, landed cost at Mombasa. That is one factor. And we have no control over that as a country. The second factor is taxes and levies, which to a large extent is determined by the House, the National Assembly, and the Senate, I believe. So I'll be working closely with you if I get appointed 
to, to address that. But the third factor, Honorable Speaker, which I, 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 we as a ministry we may have more control over, is the question of storage and transportation of fuel, the logistics. And in the, on this call, I will be working closely with the Kenya Pipeline Company to enhance efficiencies. I'm happy to note that there are opportunities for the Kenya Pipeline Company to extend its pipeline, which is currently about 1,340 kilometers from Mombasa to Kisumu and Eldoret. There are opportunities to extend that pipeline to uh, Kampala and eventually to Kigali and possibly to DRC, Honorable Speaker. If and when we do that, then KPLC will be able to generate more revenues, okay, and reduce its costs, operational costs, which of course goes into the prime, prime price, you know. Honorable Speaker, you know, you are aware that uh, Uganda has, since this month, I think, started importing its fuel directly. But even still, it's using our pipeline. Okay? Which is a benefit to us. We're not losing anything, really. Previously, we would... The pipeline yes. world over is a highway. Correct. Yes. And, it's, and they're paying us. Previously, out of the 100% imported fuel or petroleum products, Uganda would take 20%. But now that 20%, it is importing directly, but still passing through our pipeline. How I wish the extended pipeline to Kampala and DRC could, also, could be owned by Kenya, you know, Honorable Speaker, if it's possible. Of course, pipeline makes money in two ways. One, one, by the volume that goes through it. Two, by the distance that volume travels. So I, I think we have got serious opportunities uh, to make Kenya Pipeline Company more competitive, even though even now it is posting fairly Ion good Kaziako, pipelines all over the world are not constructed with domestic resources. They're so lucrative that any lender will give you money. So it's up to you to go and organize. Thank you. Uh, I think it's finished, basically. Yes. Yes. I'm going to look at yes. uh, why they are billing you incorrectly, Honorable Dawood and other, cons okay, and other consumers here. Uh, nominee, let me ask you uh, a question or two. Kenya Power is a monopoly. In fact, the biggest monopoly in this country. And yet, we keep on seeing stories that it is technically insolvent or has serious financial difficulties. If you find favor and become the CS, what are you going to do to ensure that this monopoly that has a stronghold over every sect of life in Kenya, that collects money from everybody, some up front with prepaid meters, becomes profitable and pays a dividend to the treasury. Because it is a state company. Number two, and this follows what Rahim was uh, saying, there is a lot of erratic billing by Kenya Power. You are truly here has been a regular victim. They give you one bill of 28,000 in one month, the next month they give you 89,000. And it's the same consumption in the house. There is one time they gave me a bill, nominee, of 550,000 for a month and they came and disconnected my power from the pole. And they're the only supplier, so you have to pay. What are you going to do about this? Then you had Mbalambala MP. A breakdown has taken seven months without fixing. 
Will you consider, if you are confirmed, to sit with KPLC and give them strict timelines and schedules within which to respond to public needs? If there's a breakdown, it should not take more than a day. Time allowing or not allowing, two days. But seven months is unacceptable. If you are confirmed, you know we are giving, and the government has done very well for the last over 10 years. Schools have been connected with power in many parts of the country. But if you go to these schools, if you turn up as an MP, the first thing you are told is we have not paid our electricity bill. Please help us to pay. Would you consider having an arrangement where schools and public institutions are charged subsidized rates so that they do not pay commercial rates like industries, factories, and other households. So that in some schools you go, there is power connection, but the only thing it's used is teachers charging their phones, nothing else. They cannot afford to use it for anything else. So if you can consider that. Lastly, if you are confirmed, you know I was the first electricity regulator in this country, you remember? Yes. At that time, when we carried out a study, there was in the Southern Africa countries called the Southern Power Pool, where Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Botswana, Lesotho, Swazi, were all interconnected. So if there was a shortage of power in Zambia, it automatically flows in from the connection in the pool and vice versa. Would you consider creating, working with your counterparts in the region to create a power pool for the East African countries, including Ethiopia that now has enormous capacity after the Renaissance Dam, so that we can, in times of straits like droughts, it automatically flows into Kenya, there is metering, and we pay for it. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. <coughs> I will start, I will, I will answer them in the reverse. And I agree with you, we have no option but join in in the East Africa power pool. First, as a way of creating for our actors additional market. So that if we do what we are, we are promised to do of increasing our installed capacity, then excess energy can find an outlet, Honorable Speaker. And in the converse, if we are short of energy, for whatever reason, we can get energy from the neighboring countries within the pool easily into our national grid, Honorable Speaker. There are no two ways about it. The issue of possible subsidy for schools is a great idea in my view, Honorable Speaker, and it's an issue I may have to pursue. And, uh, see to what extent it can be uh, actualized if and when we, we adopt it. it. It looks very revolutionary because the schools are actually suffering a great deal in terms of uh, struggling to pay these bills. And the issue of erratic billing by KPLC, which was clearly indicated earlier on by Honorable Daoud, the issue of KPLC profitability, despite being a monopoly. Honorable Speaker, I said from the outset that in my view, based on what I've seen on the desk, on my desktop analysis, the KPLC would require nothing short of a business process engineering. But then, if and when I get appointed eventually, I will have to have a sitting with the KPLC management and uh, other players to dig deeply into the matter of KPLC, yeah, so that uh, when eventually we prescribe solutions, the solutions that will have long-lasting impact for the benefit of the people of Kenya, Honorable Speaker. Thank you.
I've sent a few questions. Some have uh, been put to you and you have answered. Will you end KPLC monopoly? That I've just asked you. And corruption in the petroleum industry, what will you do about it? When you will revamp oil drilling in northern Kenya? I think this is all answered. Another one says, KPLC sacked 40 staff in Mombasa in 2020. When they appealed, the managers who had sacked them sat on the appeal, and some already dismissed it. Will you intervene if you are confirmed? The other one, yes, my. The other one is: What strategies do you plan to implement to reduce or eliminate power outages and improve the reality? reliability of electricity supply across the country. This you have answered. Can you outline specific measures to enhance the efficiency and capacity of the national grid? You have answered. Illegal power connections not only result in significant revenue losses, but also pose serious safety risks. What steps will you take to curb illegal power connections and ensure that all consumers are legally and safely connected to the electricity grid? How will you el collaborate with law enforcement and other relevant agencies to address this issue comprehensively? I think you have also touched on that. And uh, finally, it's to also indicate to you, nominee, that in comparable jurisdictions like uh, Philippines, power losses amount to just about 5 to 6%. And here you talked of what, 40%, 23%. It's unacceptable. Uh, Owen? Yeah, I have a question here from one of the people watching. It says, hello, Mwishimua. My name is Kibor, an employee of KPLC and a skilled contract. Can you ask Honorable Opio why we've stayed almost five years under contract, yet they bring unskilled employees instead of hiring us? And he says, we have 892 skilled fundies who are under contract in KPLC, and they have refused to hire. You are not state. a minister. You will not answer <laughs> that. And you are not solving industrial problems in KPLC. Yes, you are being vetted. Yes. Uh, honorable members, we will now. Yes, Mary? From? You have? Go ahead. One only. Sorry. One is from a Kenyan who is complimenting you and saying if you open the refinery, they'll have opportunity for internship as, as, uh, as, as students. The other one is asking, how long does it take to compensate a Kenyan whose house was burnt in 2022 through a transformer fault? So if you get to office, how long will you take to compensate such Kenyans? Honorable Speaker, I think uh, if I am lucky to be uh, appointed, I will take up these issues okay. with the relevant persons in KPLC here. Yes, uh, nominee, can you answer the following questions? Have you been adversely mentioned in any integrity-related report? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, do you hold any leadership position in any political party within Kenya? No, I'd, long, I'd resigned last week from both ODM and Azimio Laomoja Coalition Party. What is your net worth? My net worth is about 530 million Kenya shillings. 530. Made of? Well, it's largely cash. A little bit of cash, uh, real estate, a lot of interest in real estate, mm -hmm. uh, developed and also farms. I mm have -hmm. uh, farms all over, Honorable Speaker, in CIA. <laughs> in CIA. You've been buying out your neighbors? Not really. <laughs> I also have a farm in Narok, yeah. Honorable Speaker. I've got yes. some plots in Kitengela. Yes. In Migori, yes. In Honorable Junior's constituency. In Bungoma? Uh, Bungoma, no. <laughs> I have got uh, some residential uh, houses in Migori. Yes. Yeah, in Nairobi here, on Kangundo Road. Yes. 
That is unsolicited information. <laughs> Nominee, unless you are otherwise unlawfully lawfully held, uh, we have uh, we received uh, how many? Thirteen memoranda on you. You responded to all of them satisfactorily. Your documents have been checked with what we have, and they have been found to be in order. You are therefore released to go about your duties. You know, you are a member of this committee. Ordinarily, you are a member of this committee. Yes, I know, Honorable Speaker. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. But you are not allowed to participate in the, any of the proceedings in this regard. Most of Th Thank you. Actually, we have not discharged him from the committee. <laughs> Once he leaves parliament. Yes, once you... You need to decide in love. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. And I, I want to thank you for the manner in which you have conducted this uh, process up to now. And I can only look forward to your favorable consideration when you retreat to do your report, Honorable Speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable Wandai. I'm delighted that for a change, you can plead. <laughs> <laughs> Honourable members, we break for 10 minutes. No, 10, so that the staff can also put on your desks the documents for the next. Yes.